Hey, West Seaford students. Uh, Mr. Forston here, your school counselor, just coming to you uh, for week two of our online uh, classes for specials. Um, I really, really miss each and every one of you. I just want you to know that. Uh, I know these are crazy times, but man, technology is awesome. And I thank you for taking the time to uh, come to the website and watch these videos. Uh, remember, there is one for art and music and media uh, and, and gym as well. So make sure that you're taking part in those. Uh, it's an awesome way for us to be able to give to you and for you to connect with us. Uh, I want to thank those that watched uh, week one um, of school counseling. And what I was asking you to do was to make a list of five things uh, that you cannot wait for when we return to school. Uh, you can do that through Dojo. I got several screenshots and pictures of people's work, uh, and man, that just brought so much joy to my heart. So I really appreciate those that were able to do that. And if you missed it, it's okay, because you can go to the website and you can still watch week one, uh, and you can do that activity uh, whenever you want. But what I want to talk to you about today is that students all over the world have had their routines and schedules disrupted just like you and I. Uh, think about your family and the routines that you have. Uh, have they changed any at all since we've been at home doing this online class um, stuff that's, you know, right now? Take a second to really think about how your day used to be weeks ago before any of this happened. You know, were there things that you were doing then that aren't the same now? You might notice that you're, you're getting up later. Maybe you're even going to bed later. Uh, maybe you're, you're eating lunch whenever you want. There's no set time. Um, maybe you're having snacks throughout the whole entire day. You know, whenever it's okay with somebody in the house. Uh, you know, hopefully you're asking. About, maybe you stay in your pajamas all day. Maybe you don't. Uh, you might even notice that you're getting way too much technology time. Maybe you're on those tablets or those game systems way more than you normally would be. Now, these changes aren't all bad either. I've seen lots of photos of families and students playing outside, riding their bikes, learning how to ride two-wheeled bikes, for example, uh, more than I ever have. I've seen families that are playing games together, uh, that are walking together, uh, going fishing together, still practicing that social distancing, but they're doing things that they normally wouldn't have time for. Maybe it's even having dinner together, eating breakfast together, having lunch together, because there's no sports or activities or places to be now that we're during this time. I would love for you, by the end of our time together, to, to just pause and make a list of five ways that you can find calmness during this home quarantine. As we're stuck at home and not able to, to stick to the same schedules that we usually do, that brings a lot of stress. So I'm asking you to make a list of five things that you could do, five activities, five, you know, that you can do to just bring you or maybe even your whole family calmness uh, and then I want you to take a picture of that and send it to me on class dojo but I have my own um, five ways that I think that you could use even in your list to bring calmness and I want to go through those so I want you to make that list so the first one is that I want you to get enough sleep you know first things first Please do not uh, stay up late getting schoolwork done or uh, watching movies or playing video games. You need all the rest that you can get. When you don't get rest, um, our bodies release chemicals. They release chemicals that, that make us more stressed. And we don't need that. So set a bedtime and follow through with it. Stick to it. My kids, my three kids that I've talked to you all the time about... They're still going to bed around 7.30. It's a little bit later than usual. They usually are in, in bed usually around 7. But since we don't have really a wake-up time, they're, waking, they're going to bed around 7.30. And we've stuck to that pretty much every single day. 
Whatever doesn't get done, it's okay. It can be delayed. You can stop. But you have to be okay with that. Because guess what? It will be there tomorrow. And you can pick up right where you left off. Understand that. that That's okay. And you need to get enough sleep. That's really important for number one. Uh, number two is that I want you to just breathe. That's That brings so much calmness. And we practice that in our class all the time. Uh, that meditation time that we set aside for the first few minutes just to sit quietly and relax. This is a very trying and stressful time for many. Uh, there isn't an easy way to get around that. Uh, it's all about how we respond to that situation, though. Uh, we have discussed in class that there are some things that we can control completely, and there are some things that are way beyond our control. And I think this is one of those things that is way beyond our control. Um, a lot of what's going on is out of our control. Breathing is a sure way to get your blood flowing and, and those ideas circulating for yourself. And uh, it, it's good to do for yourself, to clear your mind, and also for your whole family so that uh, you're able to stay calm. Um, a practical breathing exercise is one that we've practiced in class. It's that breathing in for five, holding for five, and then breathing out for five. So you'd breathe in and you could use your hand. Just using your hand to count that, to breathe in for five, hold for five, and then exhale or breathe out for five. That is really important. And the next one that I want you to remember that a way that you could bring calmness to yourself is um, to take breaks. I know that we um, are technically working during the week, um, doing these digital learning days. However, you're at home. Some of you are in your PJs doing your classwork. If you need to, take breaks. This is one benefit of not being at school, not having classroom hours. Think of this as a time of freedom for you. Uh, take lunch breaks, snack breaks, go to the bathroom whenever you want. Oh, the glories of working at home. When you're in student mode, we sometimes, you forget that you're human. Teachers, we forget that you're human. We forget that we're human. We sometimes don't even uh, remember to just take breaks. That's the great thing about you being at home is you can take breaks whenever you want. Listen to your body. Follow the directions that it's telling you. And if you need a break, take it. Because guess what? You deserve it. Um, and then uh, number four. Uh, this is pretty important, and, and I try to practice this a lot, even in our class, is give yourself grace. This is new for a lot of students. It's new for a lot of teachers, too. Many of you are, are following your grade-level lessons and doing extra work at home on top of that. Or maybe you're getting on those websites that your teachers have suggested that you get on to keep you fresh and ready for when you return. And I promise you that you are not the only one struggling to figure it all out. Uh, give yourself grace. Forgive yourself for the mistakes. We aren't going to be perfect. Maybe around week three, maybe week four will be a lot better. But we just have to hold on and, and get through this together. We have to accept that there's going to be roadblocks. There's going to be problems, struggles, hurdles that we're going to have to try to get over. And maybe we need to even laugh at times about those. We aren't going to be perfect, but we will do it together. And then there's number five. Number five is the one that I really want you to focus on, and that's to enjoy the small things. Take this time to enjoy being at home with your family and uh, take your work outside. Do it in the grass like I am. Hear the birds and the people working in their yards and the cars going by and honking and uh, just looking at the sky, hearing people and seeing people. Enjoy those little things that we sometimes let slip through. Go for a walk. FaceTime a friend. If you're worrying about someone, call them. Write them a letter. If you're worried about your teacher, send them a message on Dojo and let them know that you're thinking about them and that you appreciate all the work that they're doing because they surely appreciate all the work that you're doing. Just enjoy the small things. Look for what's most important, those little things around you that are happening that maybe we just don't have time to look at when we're running through life crazy and busy. Now, what I want you to remember most is to remain calm and do your best. 
During uncontrollable situations as this one that we're in, I believe that's all any of us can do. You know, all I, that's all I could ever ask for is that you just do your best. Stay calm. Don't freak out. Ask questions. Just relax. Use some of these five ways to stay calm. Don't sweat the small stuff. If being separated from your students and teachers makes you feel uneasy, give them a call or a shout out. That's so easy to do today with all of our technology. Take this situation and try to find the positives as much as possible. And know that you're not alone. We're all winging this. We're all in this together. Now just breathe. If nobody's told you today, as I always tell you, I love you. The staff at West Seaford loves you. We care about you and we miss you. And we can't wait to be together again. This is Mr. Forrest and your school counselor signing out.